Hi there, and welcome to the Cotswold Explorer. I'm Robin Shuckborough, and we're exploring the wonderful region of the Cotswolds in southwest England. We've decided to revisit the centre of the region and find some hidden gems, places that are not quite so famous, but still just as beautiful. And today you find Ross and me in the lovely little town of Chipping Sodbury. It's an extraordinary place this with a wide market main street and behind me the Church of St John the Baptist. We're going to show you round. Come with me. We are reaching towards the southern end of the Cotswolds at Chipping Sodbury. We visited Badminton nearby whilst filming a piece about the influence of the royal family on this region and we couldn't miss the opportunity of dropping in here. The Cotswold limestone escarpment is very nearby, but here it only reaches a height of about 300 feet, whereas we've seen it at 700 feet and above elsewhere. However, it would be churlish not to include this town in the region. Many feel that the Chipping Sobri Central Street is one of the most unspoiled and beautiful of all, as I arrive here, I'm not entirely sure I agree. There is something about its enormous width that leaves me feeling it's lost its sense of human scale. My first impression is just a little uncomfortable. But never mind, we must persevere, as first impressions are often unreliable. Firstly, its name. The prefix chipping is an old Anglo-Saxon word and it depicts a market. We've come across it many times in the Cotswolds before and the Sodbury bit is probably derived from an Anglo-Saxon bigwig called Sopper who had a stronghold here. As a whole it means market at Sopper's town or something similar. The first thing that strikes you is the aforementioned extremely wide main street. It's in two parts, called High Street and Broad Street, meeting at the central clock tower, which sits at the brow of a shallow hill. It was laid out around 1160 to 1170, astride the main road from Bristol to Oxford, by the law of the manor, William Crassus. The grant of a market here was confirmed in 1227 and renewed later in the century. By 1295, there were nearly 200 Burgesses. The fact that it remains almost completely unspoiled is probably substantially down to the development in the late 20th century of its near neighbour, Yate. Heavy industry, coal mining and other job-generating activity drew people and attention away from the beautiful town of Chipping Sobbery, leaving it comparatively unaltered. Even now, those 20th century intrusions, only a very few miles away, are unnoticeable from the centre of this little town. I am already getting to like it better. Standing in the middle of the street, it's easy to imagine the bustle and noise of the original market. Stalls on both sides of the road selling all the largely agricultural local produce. It was held on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and in the 13th and 14th centuries, wool from the Cotswold Hills was being traded here. Crassus's new town didn't warrant a church of its own. His residents were expected to pitch up at the Church of St John at Old Sodbury, a couple of miles walk away. After a while, it became obvious that a chapel of ease was required in Chipping Sodbury, and in 1284, it was built and dedicated to the same St. John the Baptist. The site was limited in size, but since chapels of ease were not supposed to be able to carry out burials, that didn't matter at first. However, as the population swelled, so did the church, and eventually, in the 19th century, the church was extensively repaired and extended by G. E. Street, the architect of the Royal Courts of Justice in London. 
The presence of some memorials, chest tombs and gravestones around the church, despite its status as a chapel of ease, demonstrates how clearly it was recognised that the village was growing in status. The church has a strikingly tall tower, probably from around 1500, in four stages, with big diagonal buttresses on three corners, and on the fourth, the great circular stair tower containing the spiral stone staircase leading to the leads. If only it were possible to climb that staircase, what views we'd be able to see. There really are times when I miss the 1950s, when all these church staircases were open to be climbed. The porch, which shows strong signs of streets renewals, has three niches over the door with stone figures sitting in them, carved by Thomas Earp. Inside there is a lovely 13th century chancel arch, and look carefully for the remains of early painted decorations. The stone pulpit is remarkable. It's 15th century, and it was found by Street, who built it into the wall between the first and second bays of the North Arcade. If you have the courage to look into the stairs, or even climb them, you'll see some 15th century fan vaulting. Almost all the ceilings were renewed by street, and they are wonderful. It's just interesting how new they all look. The font is also probably 15th century, fairly plain, and certainly familiar. The stained glass, almost all courtesy of street, and made by Clayton and Bell, apart from the four windows in the north aisle, which are by Hardman from 1874, doesn't particularly excite me, but that's just me. Many will find it extremely beautiful. The rather wonderful low chancel screen was added by Waller & Son in 1892, and most of the rest of the furnishings were specified by street. Pews, stalls, and the stone reredos, also carved by Thomas Earp. In all, it's a church well worth visiting and combined with the extraordinary main street, makes Chipping Sodbury very well worth a visit. I hope you've enjoyed our little trip around Chipping Sodbury. We're slightly surprised actually, because I'm not entirely certain we were initially particularly enamored with this lovely little town, but we're feeling better about it now, and we hope you've enjoyed your tour. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. You can find us on all the normal platforms, and we'll be back inside the Cotswolds in the very near future. See you there.